did you guys know that the San Francisco 49ers won the Super Bowl this year? Did you guys know that the Buffalo Bills won four straight Super Bowls in the 1990s? Oh, that, that didn't happen? Well, according to ESPN, based on their coverage of the UFL, it absolutely did. Welcome, everybody, to JG9 News, where we talk all things NFL all the time. I'm Jared Gear, and I represent the 904 from the 602. And today, we are talking about something involving the UFL that is absolutely sickening to me because ESPN has peddled blatant misinformation across their social media platforms regarding this league. And it's a mistake that they made that they have not corrected despite being notified of. It's a mistake they made that should not have happened in the first place. It's a mistake that they made that destroys whatever credibility they had left. They already do a poor job covering the UFL. Yes, they televise the games, but they already do a pretty poor job covering the league on their website. Look at what happened with destroying the kicker for the San Antonio Brahmas. He got out with a fractured neck in that Week 2 game that the Brahmas had. That is the first article in the top headline section that has involved the UFL since February 16th. It has been two months since the last UFL story on the network, on the top headline section, where AJ McCarron re-signed with the Battlehawks. And that was a four-paragraph blurb. This is the UFL's page on the ESPN website. This is the first article since February 16th, according to that. On top of that, you go to the scores for the ESPN website, for the UFL. You can't even click on any of the individual teams. You can't even get a box score. I'm not asking for the world. I'm just asking for a box score, just some breakdown. So I don't have to go over to Fox's website or the UFL website to get the stats for the game that I'm looking for. Why do you not have a box score on here? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And then you look at the standings on the ESPN website for the UFL. Keep in mind that point differential is a higher tiebreaker than whatever they have. And the top two teams in each conference make it to the playoffs. So that's a pretty big deal. And they have the standings completely wrong. On ESPN's website... You have, in the USFL Conference, Michigan in second with a point differential of minus five. I had a Memphis with a point differential of plus five, even though they have the same record. Memphis should be ahead of Michigan. And in the XFL Conference, St. Louis should be in second with their point differential of plus one. And D.C. should be in third with their point differential of minus ten. Instead, it's flip-flopped. And just for some perspective, the UFL website has it right. I don't know why ESPN just can't use the UFL website for the standings. But ESPN has the wrong standings on their website. So again, already not doing the best of jobs. But that takes us to what we saw in St. Louis the other night. On Saturday night, the St. Louis Battlehawks played the Arlington Renegades. Over 40,000 fans in attendance. It was the largest crowd in modern spring football history. Largest crowd by any non-NFL team in the game since the start of the 21st century. Battlehawks won that game 27-24. It was a great game, one of the best games of the young season so far. And I did a video about the attendance breakdown from that game. Go check that out if you haven't already. I'll leave a link in the upper right corner and a link in the description down below. However, after the game, ESPN's NFL account, which has a lot of followers, posted this. They posted this photo that says, The UFL Battlehawks with a signature game-winning drive. It's becoming a weekly occurrence to watch the XFL Battlehawks put together a game-winning drive. This a tweet by Scooby Magiza, who is a host for ESPN. And yes, it was a game-winning drive. There is no denying that. It was 24-all with two minutes left. Taylor Russolino missed a field goal for Arlington. St. Louis drove down the field, won it on a walk-off field goal. Yes, that is 100% a game-winning drive. No problem with that. But you might notice a few other problems with this post. Number one, the game that they have a photo of took place last week. That was not the St. Louis game against Arlington. That was the St. Louis game against Michigan. You would think you would know that because the game in Week 2 took place on your own freaking network. So unless the Battlehawks played two games on the same day in two different cities, that can't possibly be true. Plus, you posted this thing on the same day after the game. Battlehawks walking off in St. Louis, which is very different from what ESPN say they're walking off in that photo, which took place in Detroit. And they show the Battlehawks and the Renegades, Battlehawks 27, Renegades 24. And the other one has the Michigan logo, the Michigan uniforms. So obviously there, there's something wrong there. There's something wrong there. Number two, the Battlehawks lost the game. The game that you posted. The one that you sent the Battlehawks in a game-winning drive-in. Jake Bates 
hit a 64-yard field goal for the win to prevent St. Louis from winning the game. On top of that, you posted this on your social media, on your Instagram, after that game. Jake Bates' first field goal kick since high school was a 64-yard game winner. So you knew that Michigan won the game. On top of that, you had Bates on the Pat McAfee Show, which is on your network. And you posted about that, clearly showing that Jake Bates is celebrating with his teammates after hitting the field goal with the caption, The Rock posted this after Jake Bates' back-to-back 64-yard field goals. So obviously, you knew, you knew that St. Louis did not beat Michigan. You knew that did not happen. And yet, you still posted about that. You still posted that Michigan lost to St. Louis on Saturday, even though that wasn't the game that took place on Saturday, and even though the Battle Hawks lost the game. How does that make any sense? And what's crazy is that this post is still up. This post is still up three days later. They posted the wrong game with the wrong photo and the wrong result, and it hasn't been edited. Has not been edited. They've been called out in the comments section, too. So it's not like no one has noticed this. One reader said, bro, they lost this scheme. Another one said, they lost this scheme, lol. Y'all posting the wrong clips. Another one said, but they lost that game against Michigan. Another one said, we lost this game, though. Another one said they lost those. So they've been called out. They've had ample notice and ample notification that this is the wrong thing. And on top of that, if that wasn't enough, I can't even find Scooby's original tweet that was in that post. Maybe he deleted it after St. Louis did not win that game and Michigan won. But I did find this one from March 31st where he retweeted something about Bates sitting a game winning 64-yard field goal. So all you had to do was scroll down his timeline and you would know that they didn't win the game. You just had to go to the same exact source where you got the original tweet from, and you would know that they didn't end up winning the game. And on top of that, even if you didn't have any of that, there's this thing called Google. Use it! Use it! Just, if you don't know who won the game, then look up who won the game! It's not that hard! And the fact that ESPN made this post in the first place, despite the fact that this was not true in the slightest bit, despite the fact that this was not the right game, and despite the fact that the right game was on their own network, and the wrong game was not on their network, so I don't even know how you get confusion in the first place like that, is crazy. They are letting misinformation run wild. They are complicit. They know 100% that this is factually incorrect, and they have chosen not to do anything about that. That post is still up on their Instagram page, and it is absolutely wild that it is. And look, I completely get the concept of trying to engage with farm and try to get impressions, make money that way, by posting rage me, by posting things that are controversial. I think it's a bad way to run a business. I think you lose a lot of credibility while doing that, but I get it. You want to rank players and teams, and you want to have some outlandish rankings so people are more inclined to click on the posts, more likely to interact with it. I get that. Mock drafts that are completely outlandish, where Caleb Williams is not going first overall to the Bears, or you have something insane like Jaden Daniels falling to the second round. Look, I, I don't agree with it at all, but I get it. I get that concept. But this is not up for debate. You can't have a debate about this. This is just factually incorrect. This is misinformation. The Battle Hawks did not win that game. The Battle Hawks lost that game. So how do you post that, especially when your platform has posted many times before that St. Louis did not win that game? Absolutely crazy to me how someone posted this on the ESPN NFL page no one has caught it at ESPN, or maybe they didn't, they, just, they choose not to do anything about it. But they are letting misinformation run wild. This is the true definition of fake news. You want to know what fake news is? This is fake news. And it's, it's absolutely sickening. It's absolutely sickening that ESPN has a duty to promote the UFL, and they are not honoring that duty in the slightest bit by blatantly getting facts wrong. So, absolutely crazy stuff. And hopefully this gets fixed. Hopefully you do a better job. That's all I'm asking. Do better. Get the scores right get the games right. That's all I'm asking. I'm not asking for the world. I'm not asking you to bend over backwards for this league. I'm just asking you, get the scores right. Get the facts right. As an institution, that is your job. Get the facts right. You clearly did not do that here, and it's sickening. But what are your thoughts on ESPN's coverage of the UFL? Do you like it? Do you not like it? 
What are your thoughts on this post? Do you think ESPN has knowledge that this is wrong? Why do you think ESPN has not adjusted the post yet? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. That's going to do for this episode of JG9 News. Be sure you like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check my main channel, Jabber Gear 9 where we talk all things NFL history all the time. And we also stream all the UFL games or just about every single UFL game on that channel doing live play-by-play -play and color commentary on the games. Thank you guys for making that the number one rated UFL stream on YouTube over the past two weeks in terms of viewership. Really, really means a lot to me. So thank you guys so much for that. And until next time, this is Jared Gear 9 signing off. And as always, go Jags.